Eastern, Western, and Venezuelan equine encephalomyelitis. And so right away we know that there are diseases that are affecting the brain and brainstem, causing uh, encephalitis in horses. Venezuelan, the one that we mentioned, uh, is probably less important in the United States because we haven't had an outbreak of that in the U.S. since 1970. Hopefully that won't come back. It's more a problem of Central and South America. Eastern and Western equine encephalomyelitis are uh, both important diseases in the U.S. and particularly on the eastern seaboard. So Eastern equine encephalomyelitis is seen east of the Mississippi River and Western is seen uh, to the west of the Mississippi River. The viruses themselves are alpha viruses in the family um, toga virus and they're transmitted by mosquitoes. So that's how uh, the, the uh, virus is going to go from uh, the reservoir, which is in most cases are birds and rodents, and it's going to get into the horse. The clinical signs of all of the encephalitides in the horse are fairly similar. So they, uh, in some cases, they'll show spinal or evidence of ataxia, meaning that it could look like a spinal cord problem. But the most significant thing is that they're going to have involvement of the brain. And so there's often going to be stupor or dementia, uh, depressed nature, uh, along with the clumsiness or the ataxia that you're going to see. Those are the usual signs that you're going to see. And they generally start a few days after the infection because you need to get some level of viremia build up into the horse and have it then enter into the nervous system to cause the clinical signs. So the diagnosis of the encephalitides in the horse um, is done by first recognizing the clinical signs. So seeing a horse that shows signs of uh, brain, brain lesions, they're stuporous, demented. Uh, history, knowing whether or not it's uh, the right season of the year, so when there are mosquitoes. Whether or not we have other horses in the area that have signs, and then blood tests. So the treatment uh, for the viral encephalitides is just supportive care. Uh, there are really no definitive uh, uh, treatments for any of the either we Eastern or Western, which are the two that we're worried about in this country. Prognosis is also not good, particularly for Eastern equine encephalomyelitis, where about 80% of the horses, uh, it's often fatal in those cases. Um, Western is a little better, sometimes as many as 50 to 60% might survive, although there's always a risk that they may have some residual neurologic deficits. So in the outcome, even when it's not fatal, there's a potential that they could have some residual neurologic deficits. So in the prevention of the uh, viral encephalitides, uh, you need to start with mosquito uh, uh, removal or elimination. So you need to be aware of not having stagnant water, about other management factors on your uh, premises that are going to keep mosquitoes at a low level. Beyond that, there are even some repellents that might be beneficial and or uh, natural biological predators of mosquitoes that are important. But probably the most important thing is vaccination. So in all the vaccination protocols you should include uh, Venezuelan, Eastern, Western uh, as a part of the vaccine program that you're going to be utilizing on your uh, farm. With the uh, sort of recent the emergence of West Nile virus as an important uh, disease in uh, horses in North America, some people have either for financial or just because of disease occurrence reasons have selected to choose one vaccine over the other. And I just think it's very important for the protection of your horse that you be aware of uh, and include the Eastern Western uh, vaccines in the uh, protocols that you use for your horse.